You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. is Maximize Retirement with your host, Sharon Rolfe. Sharon inspires, collaborates, and motivates you to repurpose your skills with the potential to generate expansive possibilities. Her optimistic perspective and interactions incite a creative synergy. So please welcome the host of Maximize Retirement, Sharon Rolfe. I'm your host, Sharon Rolfe, and you're listening to Maximize Retirement coming to you on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio today. Time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, and too short for those who rejoice. But for those who love, Time is eternity. That's a Henry Van Dyke quote. And we are here to inspire possibilities and purpose in retirement. And I am a retirement coach, and my website is effortlessvitality.org. And my guest today, I'm delighted to have and introduce to you, is John Barnett. John is currently focusing on giving talks for AARP on Fraud Watch Network, Living Longer uh, slash Smarter, Home Fit and Falls and Prevention and the Importance of Volunteering. He authored How to Feel Good as You Age, A Voice of Experience. He is a recipient of the Paul Harris Fellow award from Rotary International for Service Above Self. He's the Executive Director of Educational Commission between Japan and U.S. for people in the Fulbright programs and organization and has been in the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, including marketing and selling publications. So, Today's topic is volunteering, and John has had so much experience. He's got some wise words to share with us today, so you might want to have a pencil and paper handy to make some notes because uh, he's worth listening to. So welcome today, John. Thank you very much, Sharon. It's a pleasure for me to be here. Good, good. So I came across a Dalai Lama quote uh, last week that said happiness and compassion are very closely linked with purpose any comments on that john well, has that been uh, your yes uh, uh i found that when i was uh, volunteering uh, especially for people who had problems uh and this could be they're living in a nursing home or uh, uh they just had someone pass away or something like that uh it made them happier that I would listen to them and that I would try to help them in some way. And it made me happy because I was I, I was seeing that I was apparently doing some good. And so uh, I, I thought uh, my purpose uh, at that time and still to some extent is to help people who are needy. And uh, mm-hmm. I'm still doing that. And it's uh, very satisfying. I hope I can continue for a long time in the future yet. Well, I've been hearing from what I'm reading is that you live longer when you're volunteering. Is that right? Oh, absolutely. Uh, there, there's, <laughs> uh, there's a lot. There's a lot of information on that. Uh, not only that, but uh, people. Uh, this is information from the CDC. 
and other areas. But people uh, who volunteer are less likely to, to develop uh, some diseases, as a matter of fact. And uh, they live longer, as you said, and they're uh, less likely to uh, develop dementia or maybe develop it uh, much later than other people. And uh, they, they seem to be happier and less depressed. Uh, you know, the, the CDC says that uh, loneliness is very prevalent in the United States and other countries, too. And they said that if you have as few as two friends in the world, that's the health equivalent of smoking 15 cigarettes a day. So uh -oh. we want to have, a, yes, a lot of socialization <laughs> and engagement. So uh, there's, there's just a lot of reasons uh, for health and, and satisfaction and prevention of uh, depression and that sort of thing uh, to volunteer. Absolutely. Well, it kind of reminds me of a show I did uh, recently on fun. And she started out by saying that there's you need to have things that you do individually and things that you do socially. And I had never thought of fun that way. And yet that that volunteering is that social is one of the social aspects of um, being with others and having improving their life and as well as improving your life, right? Absolutely. Uh, I had the uh, diagnosis at age 60 of uh, cancer, and uh, I was uh, kind of motivated to work with people who had problems, like health problems like that. And yeah. I, took, I took the Stephen Ministry course, and I was a lay chaplain in an inpatient hospice center for 10 years as a volunteer. I used to go every Monday. Uh, they had 15 beds, and I would make the rounds uh, talking mm -hmm. to people, and mainly listening to people. But this is pretty heavy work, and I, yeah. I saw I saw several of them out of the door to be loaded in a hearse, you know, to be carried off eventually. So mm -hmm. uh, to lighten things up, I decided to uh, become an Arboretum volunteer. Uh, Seattle has a very big Arboretum. Yes. And they have a giant garden as well. So the University of Washington uh, Forestry Department uh, gave training every Saturday for four months, three hours every Saturday, on uh, woody plants and uh, flowers, about which I previously knew nothing. And uh, it was fun to, to take those courses. I met a lot of nice people. And then I got to lead children and adults and uh, to tell them about all of our wonderful plants in the Northwest. And uh, it was socialization for me. And it was, it was uh, less of a load than the other work that I was doing, which was a pretty heavy load at times. Yeah, yeah. Well. I um, made a couple notes here that you also got into the politics side of volunteering or of, of elder. Um, yeah. Uh, yes. I, and, and, you know, I have to confess, Sharon, that until I was 70, I never spoke to a politician because uh -oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I sent them a few letters uh, on behalf of people and I made a few phone calls to their staff but I thought, let someone else do that who feels comfortable about it. Mm -hmm. Well, I was asked to uh, talk to Senator Patty Murray at a, a conference she was having in her home, own hometown. If any, any of you listeners are not Washingtonians, she is our senior senator for Washington State. And she was talking about uh, a, a new program that Medicare put out it's called uh, Medicare Part D, which is uh, prescription help for people. And I was asked to add something to her comments because we thought that I was volunteering for AARP, but I hadn't spoken to any politicians. So after she spoke, I got up and I, I said, what you're saying is quite true, but I would like for you to know that 130,000 low-income Washingtonians are going to benefit from this new law, which she thought was in, uh, insufficient. And after that, I thought, hey, this is not bad at all. It's kind of fun. So I decided <laughs> to, to talk to uh, Maria Cantwell and then everybody on the Kirkland City Council, where I live, uh, the King County Council, and, of course, uh, the people in the legislative district uh, go to Olympia. So now I have no hesitation to uh, talk to politicians and tell them 
the needs of the older population. And uh, I, I, so I look. So, so at seventy, you started speaking with government official type people, then, right? Yes, that's correct. For the first time, yes. So John has actually suggested we ask you listeners a question, and it kind of could be one of two ways. If you previously volunteered with an organization and you no longer volunteer there, what led you to quit? Or if you have volunteered with the same organization for several years, what makes you continue to volunteer there? And we're going to cover a couple points that might link to your answer on this. But when we come back, we're going to talk to John about his nine suggestions for volunteering. So stay tuned. Intergenerational programming is uniting America due to the tireless efforts of Dr. Ramona Frischman. Retired from the Miami-Dade County Public School System, Dr. Frischman continues to develop intergenerational learning programs aimed to improve the lives of children, young adults, and seniors through unique strategies and public policy in order to establish a mutually supportive agenda. She views intergenerational programs as a resource for policymakers and the general public on economic, social, and personal initiatives that govern our society. Her work bridges the generational gap, providing many individuals the opportunity to explore areas of common ground and celebrate each other's diversity. Contact Ramona Frischman at RamonaLong at AOL.com or visit www.gu.org to learn more about intergenerational programming. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. You are listening to Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network, and this is Sharon Rolfe with my guest today, John Barnett. So, John, we're going to be covering your uh, nine suggestions for successful volunteering, and uh, the first one is kind of just start somewhere, try something. Tell us more about that one. Yes, well, there are so many opportunities in America for volunteering. It's been said many times that America couldn't accomplish what we are accomplishing, all the good things. Mm -hmm. Wow. We have a lot of volunteers. And uh, AARP, for which I am a volunteer, and most of my volunteering hours uh, are going to AARP currently, uh, we have 36 million members. And in Washington State, one out of every seven members is a volunteer. It's, I'm sorry, one out of every seven members uh, of AARP. Uh, in, in, in one out of every seven Washingtonians is a member of AARP, is what I want to say. And, but we don't have nearly that many volunteers. So uh, I think it's good to, to start somewhere. And uh, you know, it may not be the thing that you finally end up with. Uh, when you were going to school, you probably didn't visualize your the last job you held. I, I certainly didn't. Um, you know, you, you make a few changes in life um, and until t- you find something that you really enjoy uh, and volunteering the same way. So uh, whatever you think you might, maybe you want to volunteer um, uh, helping uh, people in, with, with animals, walking their dog for them or working in a, in a kennel. Uh, or if you like animals, or uh, maybe you want to do uh, like I do, uh, with, with to visit people in a nursing home. That's where I uh, got started because I saw a, a note in a in a church bulletin that uh, called friend to friend. Uh, they needed someone to visit people in nursing homes, and I started visiting this uh, fellow named Bob every week, and 
I, I, we got to be friends. Uh, I learned a lot. I found out he was a, a he had been a train a dog trainer, and so I, I moved on from there to several other things. And you know, any you don't have to worry about um, training because any good organization will will give you the training you need. Uh, if you like that, they certainly want to come to you. So uh, it's, uh, I would say, uh, anything that interests you, uh, try it. And, and you'll probably find inspiration to continue or inspiration to move on to something that's more fulfilling. Yeah, either way, it's good, though. <laughs> you make a good point with this also volunteering could turn into full or part-time paid employment. What about that? Yes, yeah, that happens to quite a few people. Uh, of course, if you're uh, fully retired and don't want to work anymore, uh, that's that's one story. But uh, sometimes if you volunteer for something you like, then probably you would like to do that and receive pay. And I tell you, millions of people have had that experience. Uh, a lot of them never expected to be offered employment. But uh, when the uh, inviting organization found out that you were so capable and you enjoyed it so much and you were so helpful and you accomplished uh, the mission that they have, then they might say, hey, we want you to come on for uh, either full or part-time employment, whichever uh, you think uh, you'd like to do. So this has, ha this has happened millions of times in America. What a nice surprise, huh? <laughs> right. My sister... My sister has a friend, a couple that they like to go camping with, and um, Jim had retired, and but his wife still ha was working at, I think, in a school kitchen, um, so she um, still needed to work, I think, several years, eight or ten years, so he did go to the hospital, since that's where my sister worked, and just started volunteering there. And it wasn't long at all when they realized that he was reliable and he was somewhat cheerful and he was very helpful. So he got offered uh, some part-time work and he's now uh, so dependable that he can basically set whatever hours he wants. And it's a good way to keep him engaged and active and a reason to get out of bed you know, while his wife is finishing up her career. So you probably got some stories like that too, don't you? Well, yes, but you know what you, you mentioned the word engagement and that's the other part of, you know, I mentioned socialization being important. Uh, it, it's good if you have a lot of friends that you can socialize with, you can talk to, you, or you can play cards with, or you can take trips with or camping or whatever, but, but you need to be engaged in something uh, that is uh, meaningful to you and and hopefully uh, meaningful to the person that you're uh, engaged with. And I've found that uh, that volunteers, by and large, are kind of nice people because they're willing to give their time freely to something that they see as valuable to to uh, our humans, fellow humans. And uh, they're they're re really pretty nice people. I've I've. I've made a, a lot of friends among volunteers, and uh, they're intelligent, and uh, they're helpful, and uh, they're, they listen. Uh, so, uh, yes, uh, I, I would say that uh, engagement is, is, is also very important. And, you, and the story you told is, of course, a success story of, of someone who's doing what he likes to do, and he's also getting paid for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a win-win if I ever heard of one. <laughs> so. Right. So um, let's see, we uh, have um, our next point, uh, you brought up something about um, healthy aging and uh, cancer it, it goes along with your second tip, what, what made of both moves you and motivates you, get you out of bed in the morning. We started to talk about that and we will flesh that out more as we come back, but I hope you're going to get some really good tips while we talk with John Barnett, a retired AARP president for Washington State. And um, I hope we give, give you some good ideas as to why you would want to volunteer in your neighborhood, too. So come back and we'll find out the rest of his success volunteering tips. 
Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe to Chandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran-owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C., Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Dupula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with Disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Thank you for coming back. We're listening to Maximize Retirement here on the BBM Global Network. And this is Sharon Rolfe with my guest, John Barnett. And we're talking about successful volunteering tips. And uh, John's tip number two is what moves or motivates you? What gets you out of bed in the morning? And his story he mentioned already started with him having cancer. But tell us more about what moves and motivates you. Oh, okay, but let, let me just say that when I found out I had cancer, um, I, I, wanted, I was uh, distraught. And uh, I called the American Cancer Society. They said there's a cancer support group meeting uh, in your town, Kirkland, Washington. So uh, I contacted them, and uh, they they have the place they were meeting was Evergreen <laughs> Hospice. And that led me to become interested in uh, end of life issues, of which there are plenty. And so I sort of developed a specialty in a sense because I I found that in uh, volunteering in a hospice center, you didn't have to say a lot. Uh, if you ask people, uh, you know, what did you do in life or something like that, they're very anxious to tell you about, uh, you know, what they did, what made them happy about their kids and that sort of thing. So uh, it was uh, really a good ear sometimes is what is needed and maybe sometimes the only thing needed to be uh, a good Mm. volunteer. Now, what gets me out of bed is uh, because I like to volunteer. I like the, the I'm well, currently volunteering for four organizations in Washington State. And in order to continue to do that, and it's, I'll, I'll give you a hint, I had I was diagnosed with cancer 28 years ago, and I already told you how old I was. So uh, <laughs> in, order, in order to stay well, uh, I get up about 4.30 every morning, and I go into a health club when it, it opens at 5.00, and I'm usually there at five, and I do my workout, uh, which is aerobics and uh, uh, and some weightlifting, uh, and uh, take a shower, come home, have breakfast with my wife, and I do that because I want to stay active. And mm-hmm. one of my favorite sessions, Sharon, which I got from uh, an Italian novel, as a matter of fact, is if you want things to remain as they are something has to change. And what that means Hmm. for me, I want to remain active and engaged and have a fulfilling life. But our bodies change, our minds change, our eyesight changes, we're more inclined to fall. Uh, So 
we have to do something to change our daily routine. Mm-hmm. So we improve it so that we will have continued good health, so that we're not going to have accidents, uh, so, so that our mind will uh, stay uh, clear, so that we're less likely to develop dementia. Mm-hmm. Uh, I talked mm-hmm. with him today, who's, uh, he's, his wife has developed d- dementia, and um, it's, it's, it's very hard. It's very hard on the caregiver. So what gets me out of bed is the desire to remain active, healthy, and inspired to continue volunteering. Yes. I had a pastor about 20 years ago that said, um, things are naturally (laughs) declining all around us. Um, So your point is, in order to counteract the decline and decay of uh, buildings and vegetation and so forth and ourselves we need to do something to counterbalance that natural tendency is that kind of right that's that's right sharon and and you don't do it just once uh (laughs) you have to do it several times and thinking of several things um Mm -hmm. because uh you know starting an age our age 30s we start losing three to five percent of muscle mass every year and, if, and uh, I'm currently working with the uh, Washington State Department of Health Older Adult Falls Prevention Program. Uh, Governor Inslee came out with a, uh, a falls proclamation uh, on first day of fall, September 22nd. And uh, the hospital costs alone in this state for uh, falls of older adults is $571 million a year. So my point is uh, you have to keep thinking of what you need to do uh, physically and mentally and nutritionally and every other way to extend the years of quality of life. Mm-hmm. My, my, uh, my personal motto, Sharon, is live long, die short. <laughs> because <laughs> there's, there's some anecdotal evidence that people who have a long life their life ends over a very short uh, period. I could even give you an example of that later if you wanted. But uh, wow, that's my motto: live long and die short. Yeah, that sounds like a good way to go. So I also see a note I made. Um, you say your volunteer recipe has contributed to a better physical, mental, and emotional health that you believe you would have enjoyed otherwise. And you want that for other people? Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, uh, we don't want to spend half of our life with low quality uh, and, you know, uh, uh, in in a dying process that lasts two or three or five or ten years. No. uh, I'm sure that because of my volunteering, I, I am in better health. Uh, I I watch that because I want to continue volunteering. I'm I'm in better mental health and I'm better in emotional health than I would have been. So it, volunteering has really been a motivation uh, for me to have uh, a healthier life and and a life of uh, quality. I think. Yay! <laughs> I want some of that. <laughs> All right. So. Yeah, I just started volunteering um, at the Arts Center just this last week. I I did one volunteer, and next week I think I do three, just kind of getting trained. Like you say, any good volunteer organization will train you. And so I'm looking forward to enjoying the uh, art and music and drama parts of town, but to do it as a volunteer, I think it's going to be paying back you know, huge results. So, uh, all right. So I hope you're making notes and listening to John really good. He's got some good points here. So, um, when we come back, we're going to talk about, um, spreading yourself around and developing a specialty. I think the specialty part kind of will be surprising to you, but he's invested some good um, experience and time into this so you'll want to listen to John's successful volunteering tips 
come back and listen for the rest of the program, please. Psychologist, master certified coach and CEO of the executive and organizational development firm, True North Leadership, Dr. Relly Nadler brings his expertise in emotional intelligence to keynotes, consulting, coaching, and training. He is the author of Leader's Playbook and Leading with Emotional Intelligence that lays out tips and tools for effective leadership. Dr. Nadler has designed multi-day executive boot camps for high achievers in Fortune 500 companies and has coached CEOs, presidents, and their staff and developed and delivered innovative leadership programs for such organizations as Anheuser-Busch, BMW, MCI, EDS, DreamWorks Animation, the U.S. Navy, and Vanguard Health Systems. To learn more and get your free iPhone app highlighting his tools with videos, leadership keys, visit www.truenorthleadership.com today. MJ Domit is the owner of Expect to be Empowered, a company whose specialty is empowering people to live their best life by following their heart and accepting themselves unconditionally. After studying and making personal changes, MJ now focuses on giving others tools for self-empowerment. She provides individual and group workshops for people who are physically, emotionally, and spiritually blocked. Inspired by her work at Expect to be Empowered, MJ authored the book Waves of Blue Light, Heal the Heart and Free the Soul with accompanying empowerment cards she is a spirit book of the year gold medal living now book award winner and her book is a number one amazon bestseller in spirituality and was a 2012 gold medal winner recognized as the living now spirit book of the year an inspirational speaker mj will show you how you can repurpose every area of your life your life did not just happen to you you chose it which means you can change it visit www.expecttobeempowered.com or call 866-264-8024 This is Sharon Rolfe, and you're listening to Maximize Retirement today on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And our guest today is John Barnett, and our topic is volunteering. So, John, what's your tip number three today? Well, uh, I I think uh, there's so many opportunities. You can you can spread yourself around. And, and find the thing that you really like and maybe develop somewhat of a specialty. Uh, in my case, uh, I saw an opportunity to be a long-term care ombudsman volunteer. Now, people don't even know what an ombudsman is. It's a difficult Swedish word. In Sweden, <laughs> it means that you're an intermediary between a citizen and the government, but that's not what it means here. Uh, an ombudsman in, here in, in the United States is somebody who uh, goes to bat for somebody else. Uh, who needs help and can't help themselves. So we have several kinds of ombudsmen, but the kind I volunteered with, and I took 32 hours of training, which they provided at no cost to me, uh, was to go into nursing homes, assisted living, and adult family homes to see if those residents' needs were being met. And a lot of times I found that they weren't being met. And uh, it it wasn't easy for me in the beginning but I would, uh, uh, I, I had to go to the nurses station sometimes and say, say, so and so I think has pressure sores developing, uh, or I'd go to the administrator and say, uh, Mrs. So and so uh, needs help that she's not getting. So uh, after a while, uh, I, I got, I guess, good enough at that that uh, I was asked to uh, go to Olympia occasionally to meet with uh, a a Department of Health uh, and also Department of Social and Health Services uh, organization uh, to give advice on uh, how to uh, work uh, successfully or volunteer successfully in these uh, licensed facilities, namely nursing homes, assisted living and adult family homes. And uh, you kind of get led from there. I mean, when people find out that you, you know something and are able to volunteer, you, you get requests. And in Washington mm-hmm. State, if you go online, you'll find uh, 200 commissions and boards that the governor is looking for volunteers for. And wow. I, was appointed, yeah, I was appointed by Christine Gregor, a former governor, to serve on a committee. So uh, what I'm saying is that, uh, and, I, and incidentally, Sharon, one of my uh, big desires is lifelong learning, and oh, I never yeah. want to stop. And these uh-huh. uh, uh, these volunteer uh, uh, organizations are great learning opportunities. 
And so uh, when, you, uh, when you develop a kind of expertise as a volunteer, uh, other organizations will come to you and say, say, we've, could you do this also for us? Uh, so I really believe that that's, that's important and it does contribute to lifelong learning, which is also lifelong satisfaction. Yeah, because if somebody's recognizing that my experience and my learning can benefit even a wider circle of people, how cool is that, that uh, they are valuing your experience and can speak to the better care of these other people who need a voice, right? That's right. And, you know, uh, this is a, this is a, 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 co- a competency that you may not have had as, when you were working. I mean, uh, if you're in lifelong learning, you, you may uh, be in an area that you never thought of even when you were in your working life. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, you have the opportunity to, to branch out or, uh, and or specialize. Uh, so mm-hmm. it is, as you said, it's cool. <laughs> I I like it when people pay me some respect for all the learning I've done, that's for sure. So, and you said um, you already gave the example, uh, tip number three, doing a, a spreading yourself around, doing a variety of things. So you've got um, balance the end of life chaplaincy that you were doing along with something more light like um, the Arboretum. And yeah. what, does another example come to mind for us? Well, I was also a, a Japanese garden guide, which is, which, as a matter of fact, is part of the, uh, of the arboretum, uh, and that was fun too because I, I got to I knew I know something about Japan having lived there, and uh, I speak Japanese, uh, so uh, that was a kind of a natural thing for me, and I and I sure. still, sometimes take, I still take some of my uh, friends. Uh, who are old or even older than I am uh, there and and uh, show them around and tell them all of, what all of the various meanings of and the symbolisms and that sort of thing. Uh, but, uh, you know, even uh, when I'm volunteering uh, on some program that may not uh, seem so uh, light, um, we have AARP has a program called Living Longer, Living Smarter, uh, which is, has four components. But we give that with uh, other volunteers. Uh, we kind of co-present, and that's fun, actually. And we can mm-hmm. throw in our little anecdotes about what happens to us in life, and, and we can say, well, we stumbled and, 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 and didn't uh, do the right thing at the right time, but now we know better. So uh, there's just a lot of opportunities. It's not all heavy lifting, uh, mm-hmm. and it ought to be fun. And, and if you were going to stay with it, and any organization will want you to have fun. So uh, I would say get in and try it and uh, learn and, and find out if that's, if that's your uh, area that you want to continue or will you, whether you want to jump to something else. Well, I'm going to think about that a little bit for myself, actually, because I have kind of uh, thought that being a guide would be kind of fun to do as another way <clears throat> of sharing your expertise and uh, typically people follow a guide because they want to learn so you're expanding their their knowledge and <clears throat> so I I might have to contact AARP myself and see what other kinds of guides would there be um available job you know uh, volunteering opportunities available so um I, I, I you know, Something you like. Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's see. We're going to come back. We're going to cover uh, tip five, six, and seven. And uh, you're listening to Sharon Rolf and Jim John Barnett. And again, let me remind you, audience, to consider if you've previously volunteered with an organization and you aren't anymore, what led you to quit? Or if you volunteered with the same organization for several years, what makes you continue to volunteer there? Because this might lead you to uh, both 
uh, something that motivates you and lo- and moves you might be part of the, your answer there, right? So stay with us. Come back and we'll share with you tip five, six, and seven. Global Glory. That's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from Friends International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866-244-5679 and feel the glory. My Dreams, My Challenges, and Joys is an inspiring book by author Linda Genazzo. This real-life account of raising a child with autism from birth to adulthood takes you on a journey of compassion, love, and hope as it tells the incredible story of a devoted family and their beloved daughter. Together, they faced adversity and never stopped believing they would find the help they were seeking. A breast cancer survivor, Linda Genazzo has a giving heart. With a background in social work with the mentally ill and the homeless, Linda continues to help families in her community. And her book, My Dreams, My Challenges and Joys, brings greater awareness to autism and those families in need. To purchase your copy, visit www.lindagenazzo.com. It's also available on Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. Don't delay. Get your copy today. Thank you for coming back. You're listening to Maximum Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And this is Sharon Rolfe with my guest today, John Barnett. And we're covering tip number five for successful volunteering, the social aspects. What do you want to say about that, John? Well, uh, as I said before, uh, uh, I think volunteers are generally pretty nice people, and uh, they a lot of them have have had quite successful lives in their working life before they uh, retired and, uh, and became volunteers. And um, uh, we exchange information. Like now, one guy I know has bicycled in about thirty countries of the world, including Nepal and Switzerland, and some difficult places to bicycle, I suppose. And he has, we share a, a knowledge. He, he'll tell me some things that I didn't know. And uh, I've, I've worked in 10 Asian countries in Australia. And so I'll, I'll share information that I've learned. Uh, and it's really a lot of fun. Another guy, if, if you can believe it, was in the Navy when they tested one of the atom bombs at Bikini, at the island of Bikini. And uh, uh, he didn't get radioactive, I guess, because he's 92 now. Uh, so he's he survived quite well. Uh, but uh, we can share some experiences, share some knowledge, share some background. Uh, you know, when we're volunteering, when we're not actually speaking to somebody, uh, but, but we're waiting to do it, or afterwards we might sit down and have coffee together. So I've developed a, a great group cadre of, uh, of good friends that I met through volunteering, and including last year, it happened that I was paired up with a doctor that I had had for 15 years who had become a volunteer, which was kind of fun because yeah. we'd, never been, we'd never have talked on, on that kind of basis before. We spent the whole day uh, uh, when we weren't uh, active with other people uh, talking, uh, sharing our backgrounds. I didn't know much about him. He didn't know much about me except from a medical point of view. So yeah. uh, it's it's really fun to uh, you know just you you might might people at, might meet people at the bridge club or that sort of thing, but uh, if you're playing duplicate bridge, you're not going to be talking. So you you may not get to know them all that well unless you you share some common activity. So that's that's my story. Well, and I kind of co- relate to those um, things you never knew you'd learn. As a serendipitous moment, it's it, it's uh, like the icing on the cake of uh, making the experience all the more rich and rewarding. 
And it's all a surprise because that's part of the reward of of um, socializing and, and working with other people. So tip number six you have is longer lives, that volunteer to improve your health. So talk about that, yes. John. Yeah, yeah, we touched on that before, but yeah. uh, it, it, it's been proven that volunteers uh, volunteering has a positive effect on your social and psychological factors, your, your, your personal sense of, of purpose and accomplishment and uh, it, it, it enhances your, your, your uh, social network, as I told you, uh, which can help to prevent stress and reduce disease risk. And stress, my, my daughter is a naturopathic physician, and she is telling me that stress is so, so bad for us. You know, I don't think I realized it fully. I've been under stress, you know, my jobs uh, previously, uh, and I didn't think too much of it. I didn't like it, but I didn't think it was so damaging to my health. But now I'm learning that stress is is really very damaging. So we know that by volunteering, you can lower your blood pressure. And uh, and incidentally, here's an interesting fact: uh, the the state that has the greatest number of volunteers is Utah, proportionately. And wow. they also have and and they have and they're they're pretty healthy people. And the area that has the fewest volunteers, which is the southeastern part of the United States, the southeastern states, they also ha- have the poorest health. So mm. it seems there's some correlation between volunteering and and, and health. And um, and also, you know, uh, uh, we we don't want to we shouldn't be sitting for more than 30 minutes a day. Uh, it, it, some people say, uh, advise, you know, when if you're watching television and adults watch a lot of television, particularly retirees, every time there's a commercial stand up for a while. It isn't mm-hmm. so necessary they're out jogging, although it's good to be moving your body and, and, and building your muscle or preventing muscle uh, slowdown. Uh, but it's, it's even very important that you don't remain sitting continuously for longer than 30 minutes. So volunteering gets me out and and gets me physically active. Yay! <laughs> I'm probably going to go for a walk after this program. In fact, I hope I, you do. I, yeah. <laughs> All right. So then, step our uh, tip number seven, John, is um, take a risk. What are you talking about? Well, uh, one example, for example, uh, is David Brooks. He's a, a columnist for the New York Times. He calls himself a progressive conservative. And he appears uh, on public television every Friday night, uh, Shields and Brooks. I, I often watch them. And he reported this year in the newspaper, he said, quote, average people feel alienated from government, unquote. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I had never talked to an elected official until I was 70. And, uh, and, and of course, I didn't go to Olympia, to the state capitol to do anything. Uh, so, uh, by being, uh, by taking the risk of talking to my senator, Senator Patty Murray, uh, and I, t- I tell you, when I stood up at, at, to tell her something at her, her press conference, uh, my stomach was churning. I didn't feel <laughs> comfortable. But, you know, after that, I realized that I thought I was doing something good for the adult population uh, in Washington State, and I found out that it's... Uh, it was okay, and it led me to to do the uh, make the other uh, contacts uh, politically uh, that I have made, and now I go to Olympia at least once or twice every legislative session and talk to my elected officials about what what is needed for uh, particularly for older adults in 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 our state. And uh, there's other ways that you can kind of stick your neck out. Uh, and uh, one was when I became this uh, hospice uh, lay chaplain. I wasn't sure I wanted to talk to people who were diagnosed as having six months or less uh, to live. And people told me later, oh, I couldn't do that kind of, I wouldn't want to get in that situation. Uh, But as I said before, in that situation, what is very valuable is a good ear because Mm -hmm. oftentimes people who are in the last months of their life, they want some companionship. They want people to listen to them. 
And uh, I found out that it wasn't as uncomfortable as I thought. And as a matter of fact, I looked forward to my weekly visits uh, to that hospice. So uh, take a risk and see if you can like it. See if you can grow from it. See if you can learn from it. Uh, and if that that is not your 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 ba- your game, then try something else. Yeah. So your what goes along with that is to get out of your own comfort zone and continue to grow um, in a way you might not have even planned on doing. So uh, I keep saying that uh, it takes a lot of courage to. Uh, transition into retirement and doing something new and uh, continuing to learn. And you're in charge of that. Look in the mirror. That's who's responsible for that. So um, remember our questions we're asking, when have you volunteered and you aren't any longer? And why did you quit? And also, uh, if you're still at a volunteer situation for over the years, what uh, makes you continue to, to volunteer there? And when we come back, we have two more tips that John's going to cover and I um, hope you stay with us. Essential Nutrients LLC is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Horses, mystical, present, past, and future, all in one. Wild, free, domestic, and healing for everyone. Betty Hames knows this and has put her horses to good use with Nature Connect Equine Coaching. Her mission is to help people affected by the loss of hope and trust in their lives and to rediscover the wonders of nature through nature-connected learning so they can rebuild their lives and live peacefully with newfound hope, trust, and joy. Betty Hames is also a certified elite life coach, a Washington State certified counselor, and chemical dependency professional. She is passionate about partnering nature with healing, and through horses, she sees amazing results and transformation in lives that might have otherwise been lost. Call 509-830-9225 and visit her at HamesLifeCoaching.com. Hold your horses. You're in for the ride of your life. This is Maximize Retirement on the BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio with your host, Sharon Rolfe, and guest, John Barnett. So, John, your tip number eight on successful volunteering is anything is possible. And when it comes to <clears throat> helping others, tell us a little more about that, please. Well, let me uh, mention some of the things that AARP offers because uh, some people may be surprised at the possibilities and variety of of volunteering. For example, a driver safety program, and that doesn't mean that I'm doing these things necessarily, but uh, if you look in your senior center, uh, you'll probably see an opportunity to take uh, the driver safety course, which I think costs around $16 or so. That's offered by AARP, uh, but uh, you get a certificate that you send to your insurance company your car insurance company, and they give you a discount on your car insurance because of that. So cool. uh, the, uh, these volunteers are, are helping people to be better drivers, uh, older uh, older people. I, after I took the course, I found out that I was leaving more space uh, between me and the car in front of me on the highway than I used to because stopping uh, requires a, a, a long distance, particularly if you're going to speed limit or more. And uh, so then there's the uh, ARP tax aid. Uh, these are volunteers who are trained to do simple tax returns for people uh, free. And, uh, uh-huh. and we about uh, 50,000 free tax returns every year in Washington state. 
uh, I got my son's father-in-law to uh, take the course, and he lives in Spokane, in uh, the Yakima area. And he told me that, that it's really fun to help people, particularly a, a lot of immigrants who didn't speak English very well. Uh, they brought in the information. He was able to do their, their tax, federal tax return for them. Uh, and they left very happy because it, it was done and they didn't have to pay for it. Well, then there's other things like uh, learning about consumer fraud. And, you know, there's a, so much fraud going on, so much scamming of, of people. We're losing billions of dollars every year uh, to fraud. And ARP is really keeping up with that, particularly Washington State. We're one of the leaders in the country uh, for uh, keeping tabs on, on, on cyber crime. As a matter of fact, I took a course from a former convict. ARP right? brought, brought a fellow who had served two terms in prison for scamming people, and he's, uh, he's, he's seen the light now, and he's teaching others how to avoid scams. Well, you know, we also have uh, possibilities uh, on affordable housing or public transportation or employment. Uh, and as I said, I'm, I'm teaching about uh, volunteerism. I'm teaching uh, people how to do advanced directives uh, and uh, things like that. So uh, there, well, I was just mention one website, uh, put in, in your browser, create the good. I'll repeat it, okay. create the good. And another one is called Volunteer Wizard. And these will give you opportunities to indicate in your neighborhood what's available and how far you're willing to travel. If you say, I'm willing to travel 10 miles, then it will show all the opportunities uh, in, in 10 miles from, from where you are. Uh, so there's just a, a lot of uh, possibilities uh, to volunteer, to help yourself, and to learn. Cool. Thank you so much, John. And I just want to remind you that my website is effortlessvitality.org. And my fabric art is available at Quilted Petunia on the Etsy website. Or you can call me at 425-877-6655. Our guest next week is Jeff Rubin. And our topic will be inclusion and collaboration. So tune in again next week as we talk about maximizing retirement this has been maximize retirement with host sharon rolf if you can dream it it is possible tune in next week as sharon reminds us that living from the heart and creating a new and meaningful life is within your reach here on sharon rolf's maximize retirement you've been listening to the bbm global network The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company. 